Hello, I'm Sarah Krakal with Castanet News, and welcome to our Meet the Candidate series for the Boundary of Similkameen riding. I'm here virtually with Conservative Party candidate Donegal Wilson. Thank you so much for joining me, Donegal. Yeah, thank you for having me, Sarah. Of course. So to start off, why don't you give me about a 15 second introduction on who is Donegal? Yeah, Donegal uh, is a small town girl that grew up in Tulamine on a cattle ranch uh, there in the Otter Valley. I uh, lived up in Smithers for about 15 years and then was fortunate enough to be able to to move back to the Samokamine Valley here in Karameas. My husband and I have a, a small engine shop here in town. Lovely. So uh, in your opinion, what is the most important issue facing voters in the Boundary Samokamine riding? Yeah, from the doors, I'm hearing lots, but uh, I think the, the one that seems to be coming up to the top the most is definitely the health care and the fact that our emergency rooms are, are not open consistently. Living in uh, rural areas that are far from urban centers that, or regional hospitals, it, it's very concerning for, for the communities when their local emergency room is not open. Certainly. And to follow that up, what would you, um, if you were elected, do to address that issue? Uh, definitely be a strong voice for rural health care. I believe that we've, we've become a little city centric and, and focusing on those regional hospitals. Uh, my emergency here in Karameas is, is actually only open 830 to 5, Monday to Saturday. It's, it's more of a, a, a walk-in clinic rather than an emergency room. And so, yeah, I definitely just want to work with the Conservative Party to, to enact the patient's first healthcare model. Okay. And so I'm sure, as you know, uh, the boundary Similkameen is a large riding uh, with two districts, if not more, as the name suggests. How will you address the needs of all candidates here? Uh, sorry, uh, voters. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it is a huge riding. Uh, I've spent the last six to eight weeks driving from corner to corner to corner, knocking on doors and listening to residents. It is, uh, you know, it is mandatory that who, whoever is selected maintains a, you know, a mobile office to meet those people in their communities. And uh, yeah, that's something that I'm strongly committed to. I believe that, you know, we have everything from a world class ski resort to uh, recreational towns that are, are dependent on, on tourism to uh, an aging population. So it, it, it's such a large riding with so many things uh, within it. it. It's pretty exciting. Okay. So if I understand correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, if elected, this would be your first uh, foray into provincial politics. Uh, what would you do to be equipped to step into the role of a first-time MLA? Yeah, I'm... Uh... I'm a chronic learner. I love to uh, push boundaries and, and figure out, uh, you know, teach myself new things. Um, it is my first foray into provincial politics, but uh, in my role with the BC Stonebill Federation, I have been working with uh, high level provincial government and federal government employees, bureaucrats, ministers um, to, you know, advocate for motorized recreation in BC. And so I've sat on ministerial committees, I've been involved in the development of the ORV Act. Uh, so I have worked with government as a stakeholder for, for the last 12 years. Okay. And so some of the issues that are top of mind are healthcare, like you mentioned. Um, so many uh, current residents are feeling not taken care of by the current healthcare system, whether that's due to a nationwide doctor shortage or, you know, uh, closing emergency rooms, which is really prevalent here in the South Okanagan, where I'm located. I'm wondering, what would you do as a plan uh, to address that issue? Yeah, I think the Conservatives' uh, Patients First Healthcare uh, is a very strong plan for rural BC. Uh, our commitment to maintain the, contrary to what the current commercials say, we're actually planning to maintain the current healthcare investments, as well as increase into areas where once we identify those gaps and to find out how we recruit those doctors and nurses, uh, we want to bring back the nurses and doctors that, that were uh, pushed out for their personal health choices. Uh, but we know that we need to do more than that. We need to uh, make BC attractive for those healthcare professionals and especially rural BC. 
Okay. And uh, on another topic that's uh, kind of, um, you know, on top, on top of voters' minds is that farmers and the agricultural sector here um, has been hit pretty hard. Uh, the closure of BC tree fruits is, you know, um, unprecedented in many ways. Um, what is your plan to ensure the agricultural sector is uh, taken care of as we face increasing um, climate instability? Yeah, I think definitely, uh, you know, the Okanagan tree fruits closure was a, a big impact to people in our riding. And uh, the reality is that Okanagan tree fruits has has been in a declining uh, position for many years. And this government uh, chose to ignore the signs that we were, you know, I don't think that the, the tree fruit was quiet about what was happening. And the challenge is, uh, you know, now that they've already decided to, the co-op has made that decision. And so now we need to find a way to invest in, in those farmers to make sure that they're uh, a, able to get through this climate crisis that just happened this last year where they're, you know, uh, they lost their vines, they lost their trees. Uh, we need replant programs that are responsive and timely. Um, you know, finding out that you can get funding for replant a year later is, is not uh, not adequate. And I definitely think that uh, we need to uh, invest in the technology in the other uh, distribution centers that we do have here in, our, in the Okanagan so that we don't see, lose more business uh, from the same neglect. Okay. And I understand um, that you've decided not to attend forums and instead meet people one-on-one -on -one in person. Um, since the Karameas Forum last week, some voters have uh, expressed a desire to see you handle such situations. Uh, can you just let the voters know what your response to that is, please? Yeah, for sure. I'm hearing clearly at the doors that people People don't want the divisive uh, politics that we're seeing within the media, uh, within the campaigns, honestly, and they just really want solutions. Um, and I feel as somebody who's still working full time in my, my regular day job that I needed to really prioritize where I was spending my time. And so I felt that that time was better spent at the doors, listening to people one on one. I had eight, eight events so far. I'm not done uh, public events that people could attend and hear me speak. Uh, and I definitely just want to continue to be available and meeting with people in their communities at their doors rather than, than being involved in divisive debates. Our policies are clearly very different. Um, it's not like we were, you know, arguing minutia. It, it, they're very opposing. Okay. Um, and finally, um, I think... Uh... We may not end up with a majority government after that. This election may or may not. Rather, if you are elected, what is one local issue you'd be willing to support another party on? Honestly, I would be willing to support another party on anything that my riding needs. The reason that I chose the Conservative Party of BC, it's a principle of the party that we vote for our riding first and our party second. And so... I plan on listening and ensuring that I know what the people of the Smoke Mean want and need and being that voice in Victoria. Okay, and uh, Donegal, can you give us a quick outro, maybe 15 to 30 seconds on uh, what you would like voters to know? Yeah, just that I'm a, a really hardworking person who has a lot of integrity. And I've chose to run my campaign that way so that I didn't have any regrets at the end. I really believe that we need to bring common sense back to BC and that I'll be a strong voice for the Boundary Smoke Me. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Donegal. To our viewers, check on castanet.com.net for more candidate interviews leading up to the election on October 19th. For Castanet News, I'm Sarah Hercall.